We have a full show of local stories that will lift your spirits, today on The Express. On today's show... Build sort of a sense of community around this inanimate object. A yarn bomb at Joy Kagawa House. When you leave a yarn bomb, you're leaving a love letter to the space that you live. The West Coast Reggae Music Awards. Being nominated for the West Coast Reggae Award, it's very exciting. I am not ready for an earthquake at all. How to prepare for an emergency. People who do have a 72-hour kit won't have to go out and figure out where water's coming from. Spring skiing at Silver Star Resort. Silver Star has been ranked number one Nordic destination in North America. See that and more local expression. It's pretty amazing. So you have tons of variety in ski area. Welcome to The Express. I'm Joe Hannah Ward in the plaza of the Vancouver Art Gallery. From all of us at Shaw TV, we send out our love and well wishes to Japan and anybody affected by the recent natural disaster. Now, on a local level, here in the Lower Mainland, there's been an outpouring of support, both financial and emotional. And there's also been an increased business at a local store. Krasicki and Ward, emergency preparedness. In my tree, I perch on a sturdy branch. Like many of us, Charlotte K. McQueen leads a busy life. But last week's earthquake in Japan made her stop and think. I am not ready for an earthquake at all. I feel less than prepared, less than unprepared. Charlotte isn't alone. Very few of us are actually prepared for when the big one hits. It's something since the Japanese earthquake that we've been talking more about is how to be prepared and are we prepared and what would we do? But I don't know that anybody actually is. Scott Larson of Krasicki and Ward Emergency Preparedness has heard it all before. Certainly by contrast to some of the images I saw in uh, coming from Japan where people seem to have their supply lines figured out and things are moving along pretty orderly there. Uh, here it seems like a lot of people haven't really gotten over the hump of procrastination to take matters into their own hands. And the Vancouver earthquake will be a subduction earthquake very similar to Japan. The last time we had one here in 1700, the average slip on the fault was something like 65 feet. So it shakes for a long time and it's devastating. So Charlotte is no longer procrastinating. I would like some information on uh, earthquake preparedness. Okay, this is for yourself, your family? Family, yes. So how about I get a kit and uh, we'll take a look. That'd be great, thank you. So here is a four person survival kit for 72 hours. Basic supplies for any earthquake kit include water and food, sanitation supplies, something to keep you warm, and a source of light. The emergency management experts recommend that people be prepared for a period of 72 hours. Things won't be back to normal in that time, but at least in the earliest, worst part of the chaos, people who do have a 72-hour kit won't have to go out and figure out where water's coming from. I feel a little bit more secure, a little bit more prepared. I feel like I might know a little bit more how to keep my family safe and I'm happy to have my kit. I'm Erin Shaw in Vancouver for The Express. You can go to krasickiandward.com to make sure the store has what you're looking for in stock. You can also go to the city's website, vancouver.ca, and click on the emergency section for more ideas on being prepared. Now, another group that's been super busy recently, local knitters. For the past two months, they've been knitting and crocheting pink cherry blossoms. And we've got the where and the why. In 2005, there was a woman called Magda Saig who started doing something she called knit graffiti, which was leaving knitting in public places. I was always tickled by the idea. I just thought it sounded delightful and whimsical. I'd never really felt compelled to try it myself until we started writing the book. And then we did some for the book, and it was so much fun. I just, I love doing it now whenever we get an opportunity. It's of imagination. The knitted tank, adding fuzzy wings. Cute. People have covered buses and large buildings. They've covered houses. One thing that we've encountered is when you create a yarn bomb, it tends to be something that really involves community. So people see it, they become entranced about it, they, they tell other people about it. It builds sort of a sense of community around this inanimate object. With the cherry tree, it is a symbol of all the work that Joy Kagawa did and a symbol of the house, letting writing blossom in the house. 
And I think it's an opportunity to, to create something to show the appreciation of a, a writer who created work that contributes to our culture. The fact that there's a house that's going to contribute to the future of our literary culture. And also just to bring people together in the community to create something by hand and, and to celebrate um, artists and the work that they do while creating art themselves. Welcome to Kagawa House. We have now set up a writer's center here at the Kagawa House where writers from different parts of the country are invited to come and write and to present workshops, to host writers' evenings. This is the writer's uh, working space. It's got a view out the window of the cherry tree. We're here in South Vancouver, so we get lots of sun down in this end of town. So it's a, it's a beautiful space to write. This is the room where the writers sleep for the three-month residency that they're here. Last year we had a wonderful writer here, Nancy Lee, whose first book was Dead Girls, and she got a good chunk of her next-to-be-published novel called Born Slippy done while she was here. During the three months that I was here, we organized some amazing community programs. We had a Writing for Social Change series with authors coming in who did interviews with me, uh, talking about writing around social issues. And sort of the purpose of the Writer in Residence is to draw community uh, to the house, to find out what the house is all about, to tour the house, and to have an experience of being in the house as a, a wonderful symbol of historical and cultural significance. <laughs> It's been fun to uh, see like what a mixed group of people have come for this and it's been really uh, exciting to see how engaged people are by the project. <laughs> when you leave a yarn bomb, you're leaving a love letter to the space that you live or a place that you appreciate or your city. So it's nice to think people were, were knitting and crocheting love letters. You can go to kagawahouse.com to find out more information on the Writer in Residence program. You're watching The Express and we have more local stories, the creative and the caring coming up. After the break, how this vacation home could be yours. The furnishings, all the decor, they're there for, for anyone who should win that prize, but you have to buy a ticket. Reggae band Daddy Roy and the Messengers. You're watching local TV on the Express. Tell her to come on over and dine with the neighbors.